about this time, the girl begins to grow faster than the boy. By 12 or 13, the girl is taller and heavier than the boy, and she looks more mature. At 15, the girl's growth slows down, while the boy keeps on growing at a rapid rate for another year or two. When they reach their late teens or early 20s, they are fully mature people with the boy again being appreciably larger than the girl. By comparing the adult with the child, we can see the growth changes more clearly. Notice that the adult face and head are less round, and the arms, legs, and trunk relatively longer. The boy's shoulders are broader and his body more muscular, and the girl's body is more curved and feminine. Thus we see that growth is more than just growing up. The form of the body changes as well. Growth is controlled by tiny organs within our bodies called glands. One of the most important of these is the pituitary gland, located in the head. It secretes chemicals into our blood. The chemicals are called hormones, and they regulate body growth. The pituitary hormones also influence the secretions of other glands, notably the testes and ovaries, located in the pubic region of the body. The testes secrete the male sex hormone, and the ovaries the female sex hormone. The presence of the male hormone in the blood causes whiskers to appear on the face, and hair to grow under the arms, in the pubic region, and elsewhere on the body. The vocal cords get larger, and the voice deepens a little. The female sex hormone also causes hair to grow under the arms and in the pubic region. The breasts begin to develop and the girl's voice deepens a little too. These physical changes usually make the boy feel more manly and the girl more woman, which are perfectly normal feelings. In addition to hormones, the testes and ovaries produce the male and female sex cells from which we all have our beginning. The male cell or sperm cell is so small it can be seen only under a microscope. When we magnify the sperm cell many times, we see the head, which contains the nucleus, and the thread-like tail, which wiggles and causes the cell to move. The female cell, or ovum, while larger than the sperm, is still no bigger than a pinpoint. By enlarging the ovum many times, we can see the cell wall and the disc-like nucleus. It is from the union of sperm and ovum from father and mother, that growth begins. The nucleus of the sex cell carries the substance which enables a child to resemble his parents. When a boy is between the age of 13 and 16, the testes begin to produce sperm cells. At certain times, the sperm cells pass from the testes through the tubes and out the penis. This happens during mating and sometimes during sleep. It is a normal function of the body. In addition to the ovaries, the sex organs of the girl consist of the tubes, the uterus, and the vagina. When a girl is between the age of 12 and 15, the ovaries begin to produce ova or egg cells. About once every one, an ovum ripens and leaves the ovary, moving into the tube. While the ovum moves slowly along the tube, the uterus becomes richly supplied with blood to nourish the egg. But if the ovum doesn't meet a sperm cell, it fails to grow. Instead, it disintegrates. The uterus sheds its length and a little blood passes from the body. The bleeding decreases and in a few days stops completely. This process is called menstruation. The whole cycle begins again with another ova brighten, usually in the opposite ovary. During early adolescence, the menstrual cycle may be quite irregular. It usually takes a year or two for a rhythm to become established. 
These functions begin as we attain sexual maturity. But all of us do not mature at the same age. These boys and girls, for example, are all 13 years old. Yet among them, we can see many differences in size and maturity. By the time they reach their late teens or early 20s, when they have completed their education, have a steady job, want to get married, and are ready to accept the responsibility of having and raising children, the differences in sexual maturity will have disappeared. Human growth can begin only when the sperm cells of the father, during mating, pass from the penis into the vagina of the mother. The sperm cells use their tread-like tails to move into the uterus and tubes. If the sperm cells meet an ovum, and one sperm succeeds in breaking through the cell wall, fertilization occurs. The nucleus of the sperm joins with the nucleus of the ovum, and growth begins. The fertilized ovum begins to divide into many cells while moving along the tube toward the uterus. There it attaches itself to the inner lining. Drawing its nourishment from the blood of the mother, it continues to grow, and in a month looks like this. At two months, it is much bigger and is already beginning to look like a baby. You can see the cord which connects the baby to its mother and through which the baby receives its food. One of the most wonderful things about nature is that the uterus, which is normally not much bigger than a fist, is muscular and elastic enough to expand to many times its normal size. At four months, you can already see why this expansion is necessary. The baby now has arms and legs that move inside the mother. By six months, the baby has gradually turned and moved to this head-down position in preparation for birth. The baby is very active now. It is not only the uterus that expands to accommodate the growing baby. Here you can see how the whole abdominal wall stretches. This baby has developed for nine months and is about to be born. If the mother were lying down, this would be the position of the baby just before birth. You can see the mother's spine below the enlarged uterus. The head settles to a lower position. And the muscles of the uterus begin to force the baby out. The muscle walls of the vagina expand to make room, and the baby's head begins to move out of the mother. The doctor lends a helping hand and the new baby meets the outside world. Since the baby no longer has to depend upon its mother's blood for food, the doctor ties and cuts the cord. The baby cannot feel the cutting any more than you can feel it when the barber cuts your hair. Growth continues, and this baby will become a full-grown boy or girl, and eventually a father or mother, thus continuing the cycle of human growth. Thank you. 
only one sperm cell. The ovum is produced here and moves into the tube. The sperm cell has to travel all the way up here to find the ovum. Most of the time, the two sex cells wouldn't meet at all, and very few babies would be born. That's the reason for having more than one sperm. In addition, it takes many sperm cells fighting against the ovum to weaken the cell wall, so that one sperm can enter and unite with the nucleus of the ovum. So nature doesn't depend on just one sperm cell. She provides millions of them, any one of which might fertilize the ovum. Does that answer your question, Lloyd? Yes, it does, Miss Baker. Are there any more questions? Julie? About menstruation. Is it really normal for the body to bleed like that? Completely normal, Julie. Simply because nature planned it that way. Remember in the animated film, the lining of the uterus became filled with blood with which to nourish a fertilized ovum. Yes, Miss Baker. Well, when the ovum is not fertilized, there's no need for this nourishment. So the uterus merely sheds a single line, and naturally a little blood leaves the body at the same time. Now for the questions the rest of you have. Perhaps you should ask them in turn. Then we can organize our discussion around them, as well as those on the board. Do boys have anything like menstruation? I heard Mother tell a neighbor I was born cesarean. What does that mean? Why don't all people have red hair? What happens if more than one sperm cell enters an egg cell? I've grown four inches in the past year. When will I stop growing? How long will it take for my voice to change? Are girls always bigger than boys at 12 to 13? Everybody says I look like Aunt Sarah. Why do I have to look like her when I don't like her? All of those are excellent questions. You students who've been watching this film, You've heard the questions with...